get together and worship again. But uh, before we get started, let's pray. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for a day today. We thank you for a good night's rest. And Lord, we thank you for a time of worship and fellowship last night. And just pray, uh, God, that you open our hearts, open our minds today. God, that uh, you would just push Jeremy and I out of the way and we'd be able to speak truth from your word today. Father, we thank you for our church family. Lord, for those that are watching this live and those that are going to watch it later today, uh, God, just pray that you just surround them with your peace. God, you uh, give them the, the wisdom they need and Lord, help them to use the strength that comes through your Holy Spirit. Father, we love you. We thank you for your grace and we ask for your mercy. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're trying to reconnect. Still recording on that one though, aren't we? Good deal. We're maybe having some technical difficulties with Facebook. Not sure uh, connection problems, but we're trying to get the live going. But just in case uh, you're watching uh, this video later, that's one thing. But if it's live, that's all right too. Hey, last night we uh, we were out at the ranch and uh, we were talking about Passover and we were talking about the Last Supper. And, and we ended the Last Supper last night with... Um, Jesus and, and teaching his disciples about communion basically. This is my body which I am given and this is my blood that I am shedding for you. So today, this morning, we're still just kind of at the end of that. We're in Luke 22 again and we're going to be jumping around. So if you got a pen, write down some of these verses this morning. But Luke 22, verse 39, it says, Then, then accompanied by his disciples, Jesus left the upstairs room and went as usual to the Mount of Olives. There he told them to pray that you will not give in to temptation. He walked away about a stone's throw and knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Then an angel from heaven appeared and strengthened him. He prayed more fervently and he was in such agony of spirit that his sweat fell to the ground like great drops of blood. At last he stood up again and returned to the disciples, only to find them asleep, exhausted from grief. Why are you sleeping, he asked them. Get up and pray, so that you will not give in to temptation. You know, as we read this story, and uh, man, it's amazing that, that all four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all four of them record uh, some variation, but, but record the same story about Jesus and the disciples going to the Mount of Olives to the Garden of Gethsemane. And the, the story that, um, that I really, I think, speaks to me the most is in Matthew 26. And again, I just want to read that, that version again as Matthew writes here uh, about the same thing. Matthew 26, starting in verse 36. It says, Then Jesus went with them to the olive grove called Gethsemane, and he said, Sit here while I go there and pray. He took Peter and Zebedee's two sons, James and John, and he became anguished and distressed. He told them, My soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. He went on a little farther and bowed with his face to the ground, praying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Then he returned to the disciples and found them asleep. He said to Peter, Couldn't you watch with me even one hour? Keep watch and pray so that you will not give in to temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Then Jesus left them a second time and prayed, My father, if this cup cannot be taken away, we had a guest, a spider. If I um, lost my spot, keep watch and pray so you will not give in to temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Then Jesus left them a second time and prayed, My Father, if this cup cannot be taken away unless I drink it, your will be done. When he returned to them again, he found them sleeping, for they couldn't keep their eyes open. So he went to pray a third time, saying the same things again. Then he came to the disciples and said, Go ahead and sleep. Have your rest. But look, the time has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Up. Let's be going. Look, my betrayer is here. You know, as I read these stories from, from the, and a lot of that's in red, as I read these, I, I think about our church family out here. I think back to 2018 when we put some banners on the wall and the, the very first part of that has become the DNA of our church is that our ministry would be bold. It would be unapologetic, uncompromising, but biblical. And then the second one is that we would pray with greater intensity in fasting. 
Matt, what a better picture. I, I can't think of a better picture in God's Word uh, of someone praying with such intensity that he says he sweat droplets of blood. It, it's one of those times where we read this story, but I don't think we really grasp what was going on. Verse 38, it, it says that he was anguished and distressed. And then it says he was crushed with grief. And, and I've sat there and I've pondered on those verses and I'm thinking, okay, I know we, we have the advantage of knowing the rest of the story that Jesus, Jesus is soon to be betrayed by Judas. He's going to be arrested. He's going to stand trial. He's going to carry a cross. He's going to be nailed to that cross and crucified for my sins. But as I read this, I think, is that the anguish? Is that what he was distressed about? Is that what he was so agonized about? I believe that's part of it. I believe the human side, the flesh side of Jesus where he was in our place was anguished for the torture coming. But I believe the greater anguish and distress here was to know that there were so many people that wouldn't accept Him as Lord and Savior. There were so many people that would turn their backs on Him when things are good. It seems like we always turn to Jesus when things are bad. And, and as you watch Facebook these days, as you watch uh, just what's happening, uh, that church groups are, are doing Facebook Live and they're doing live streams and videos and thousands upon thousands of people are tuning in to what pastors have to say. And just as I said a couple of weeks ago on Sunday, is even after 9-11 and other great tragedies that have happened, <coughs> people turn to the Lord. But then when things get good, man, they forget. And again, we talked last night, Jeremy's words from, from Exodus, and it, when God said, remember this and pass it on generation to generation. And Christ said, remember me when you do this and talking about communion. I believe as we read this prayer of anguish, it's because He knew so many of us were just flat going to forget. We were not going to pay attention. We were going to lose sight of what's important. If we keep reading through there, uh, verse 39, he, he says again, keep watch and pray. But he said, My Father, if it is possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away. The book of Mark words that a little different. The book of Mark, Mark records it in Jesus' words of saying, Everything is possible with you, Father. Starts out, Abba, Father. Everything is possible with you. But if it's possible, take this away. Jesus knew what he had to do. And, and all three times as he prayed, he prayed, Your will, your will, your will, not mine. You know, the disciples fell asleep. And, and the, as we see in here, that he, he put some of the disciples and then he went a little farther in the garden with Peter and James and John and said, Guys, keep watch and pray, but even they fell asleep. And this morning when I got up and was studying this, as you know, we've we've talked about this at Riding the River a few times, that the church, and I'm talking about the church with a big C in America especially, has fallen asleep. And it's sad that it's taken something like this virus, something from this this stay in place or stay at home type deal for us to really get to where we're waking up. But I believe Jesus' words here are so important to us as a nation. They're so important to the church with a big C. They're so important to us at Riding the River Cowboy Fellowship to stay awake and pray. That is prayer with greater intensity. My prayer is that, that the church in America, the sleeping giant as it's been called, would wake up that we would do exactly what Jesus said, repent, we turn to Him because the kingdom of heaven is near. But that also is a great requirement for us to not only pray for our personal selves, but to pray for our families, to pray for our church, to pray for our country. What if God's people, if Christians, would keep watch, resist temptation, and seek God's will? Think about it. What if we really sought God's will? You know, what makes this story even more powerful is, is the events that I mentioned a while ago was just as Jesus has prayed at night here, it's not long that Judas brings those religious leaders and he's betrayed and he's handed over to them and arrested. And then he stands trial. And, and if we go to verse 67 of Matthew 26, 67, this is the religious leaders. This is the people in the Jewish church that was supposed to be setting an example for the people to live as God wanted them to. And it says they began to spit in Jesus' face and beat him with their fist. Some slapped him jeering, prophesy to us, you Messiah, who hit you that time? 
As I read that verse this week, I, man, I, I'm telling you, I was kind of broken because of the times that I think about when I have spit in Jesus' face, when I've beat Him, when I've slapped Him. And, and not from a standpoint of where I was trying to, to go against Christ, but because I put self in place of what God's will is. I put my own personal desires. What made me comfortable? You know, we talked about it last night, and guys, I'm telling you, having Easter service the way we're doing it this year is uncomfortable because it breaks that tradition. And I've found myself having to pray with greater intensity. God, show me what we're supposed to do. My prayer is that as you think about this, that you ask yourselves, how many times have I slapped Jesus in the face in the way I worship? Because my worship has become man-made tradition instead of God-focused obedience. My prayer is that as you think through this and you pray with greater intensity, that you think about what's coming up today in the life of Christ in this time period years ago that He's being beaten. He's being tortured. He's being whipped. He's being mocked. The very people that laid down palm leaves and, and said, Hosanna, our King has arrived, are the ones that are shouting, crucify Him. And they hand Barabbas back over to the authorities and they take Jesus and they nail Him to a cross. Jesus said, take watch and pray. My prayer is that you'll pray with greater intensity and fasting. And Jesus tells us how to pray in Matthew 6. Matthew 6, starting in verse 9, He says, Pray like this, Our Father in heaven, may Your name be kept holy. May Your kingdom come soon. May Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food we need and forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation but rescue us from the evil one. Riding the River family, one of our values is to pray with greater intensity and fasting. Jeremy's going to talk a little bit about fasting. So as you're thinking about how do I pray with greater intensity, fasting is one of those ways. Jeremy. Awesome. Thank you, Jeff. So, <clears throat> man, I hope you guys had a, a good time with your family last night. I pray that you all got to participate in the Lord's Supper as a family. Uh, and I hope you're good and full because I want to talk about fasting this morning. So, man, there, there's a lo whole lot of confusion out there with fasting. And I'm just going to tell you, like growing up in a church, man, I, I never fasted as a young young Christian, as a young man. Uh, to me, that was like an Old Testament thing. And I people, you know, they when they ask today about that, they've kind of got that uh, that idea that like that's something we don't do anymore. Uh, in Matthew 6:16, 6, Jesus is talking to his disciples, and he's telling them, he says, when you fast. So he didn't say, like, if you fast, uh, if you're thinking about fasting, he says, when you fast. So almost saying, like, it is something that we should do. That is what he's saying. We should fast. Uh, and our goals here at Riding the River Cowboy Fellowship, is, as Jeff said, is to pray with greater intensity and fasting. So, why do we fast? I mean, how does that come into play? I mean, can I just pray with greater intensity? Where does fasting come in? So, when we fast, it's an expression of our need for something greater. And that something greater is God. So, so generally when you fast, it means you're, uh, you're staying away for some, from something that's good for you. So, Here's what I, I hear a lot, and I've done all these. I'm not pointing fingers except back at me. People say, well, I'm going to fast from Facebook, or I'm going to fast from Copenhagen, or for my fast, I'm not going to drink a beer tonight with supper. That's all good. If that works for you, you do it. But I'm just going to tell you, for me personally, that, that didn't do it. The first time I fasted from food, like 100% from food, holy smokes, I felt it. And it was at those times, like during those hunger pains, that I was reminded, man, I need to be in prayer. That's why I'm fasting, because I need something greater than food, and it's God. Uh, I want to read a scripture to you. It's, it's in Matthew 9, uh, but it's starting in Matthew 9, 14. It says, One day the disciples of John the Baptist came to Jesus. So these were like the good old boys. You know, I've talked about John the Baptist a lot in other sermons, like I identify with John the Baptist. I want to be like a, an Elijah or a John the Baptist. I want to be the crazy guy in the wilderness with a stick 
calling out the brood of vipers. I mean, I, I, I desire that. I want to be that bold for God. So here are those guys. They would be like guys from our culture right. that are following John the Baptist. And they come to Jesus and they say, why don't your disciples fast like we do? And then they go so far as to say, like the Pharisees do. So they're saying, us, you know, that are out there doing what we're supposed to be doing, we are paving the way for the Messiah. We're fasting. The Pharisees are fasting. Why aren't your disciples fasting? Listen to what Jesus says to them. He says, Do wedding guests mourn while celebrating with the groom? Of course not. But someday the groom will be taken away from them, and they will fast. So listen now, if you ain't never been to a wedding or you don't understand how that bride and the groom and all that stuff work, let me cowboy that up. Jesus said, you going to mourn and be sad while you're at the party? No. And Jesus was the life of the party. He was the party he was talking about. He was the bridegroom that was with them right then. And he, and he says, but I'm going to be taken away. And he says, then they will fast. Not, they might fast if they feel like it, or if they get convicted of it, they, they'll fast. He says, then they will fast. So I said, you know, we fast as a response that we're longing for something greater than us. He says we'll fast when he's taken away. We fast because we're looking forward to his return. We fast because we're asking him to come back. Uh, I, man, just... I just want to talk to you. I don't want to, I don't want to preach at you or, or preach. I just want to talk to you. So fasting, man, it's not something I did as a young Christian. It's really been like the last three years that I've started fasting. And, and, and honest, like the last year that I've fasted 100% from food for a day at a time to really draw near to the Lord. Uh, but it's a very intimate thing, man. I mean, it is... It's a moving thing. Uh, and all the other guys that you wouldn't think would be people that would fast once they've tried it man they have the same kind of feedback as how intimate it is uh and like i said before like when you fast when you feel those hunger pains coming or when you stop at the convenience store and you can't walk through there without grabbing a candy bar but you remember you're fasting use those times to oh lord whatever it is you're praying for right now it'll be praying for our, our country and our community and things that are going on but when I fast, it just reminds me physically how dependent I am on God. And that's where He wants us, man. He wants us to be dependent upon Him. And, and, and guys, right now, take the coronavirus out of it, but just our, our country as a whole. Man, it's sick. I mean, we could be giving this message without the coronavirus going on. Our country's sick. You think about all the abortion that's going on, all the babies that are being killed daily, uh, the perversion in the church, and I'm talking about the church with the big C, everybody is adding to and taking things out to make it comfortable for them and then slapping, slapping a building on it and calling it church. That's perverted. That's a perversion. Uh, and, and just, you know, families that are busted up, and I'm not saying that, that uh, you can't make that work, but I'm saying that ain't God's design. That ain't what God intended. And, and there's some things, there's some families that are way outside God's design. But I think, just like I said last night, I don't believe in coincidences. I don't think this is all going on just because of a virus. I don't think it's happening at the time that it's happening for no reason. I think that God is looking for a call to repentance. Because what's happening right now is there are a lot of good people. And I'm talking about good people that work hard and take care of their family and they do some charity work, but, but they ain't all in believers. I mean, they heard about Jesus. They probably went to church as a kid, but they're not living it out. You know, they haven't totally denied it, but they're, they've not jumped in. And right now is a time where they're kind of being, getting the time to look up where they're seeing that there's something more than just them and what's going on in their world. I think God's looking for a call to repentance. So I want to read one more scripture to you. And it comes from Joel. And this is in Joel uh, 2.12. And, and it's titled, A Call to Repentance. It says, 
This is what the Lord says. Turn to me now while there is still time. Give me your hearts. Come with fasting, weeping, and mourning. Don't tear your clothes in your grief, but tear your hearts instead. Now I'm going to stop right there for a minute, because out here we talk a lot about your heart. We, we, you know, we've preached sermons on what's the posture of your heart. Uh, wherever your heart lies, or wherever your money lies, that's where your heart is. All those kind of things. God is constantly after our hearts. When he talked about David, he said, a man after my own heart. Uh, that deal about tearing your clothes. Now, back in those times, uh, when they were grieved, or when they were fasting and weeping, they'd tear their clothes as a sign so everybody else could see that something was going on with them. And right here, God's telling them, for this call to repentance, he says, don't tear your clothes. Tear your hearts. Tear your hearts. Return to the Lord your God, for He is merciful and compassionate, slow to get angry, and filled with unfailing love. He is eager to relent and not punish. Who knows? Perhaps He will give you a reprieve, sending you a blessing instead of this curse. Perhaps you will be able to offer grain and wine to the Lord your God as before. Man, a call to repentance. So when we come with weeping, fasting, mourning, praying with greater intensity, you know what God wants? And He wants your heart. You know, a couple weeks ago we said that, like, you, you got a choice. And it ain't, it ain't like a daily deal, that choice you make, like you're going to turn left or right. It's, he makes a distinction. You've either made the choice to give Him your heart and follow Him, or you haven't. And, and that, that's a serious split in the road. Uh, return to Him. Answer the call to repentance. Uh, so my challenge, our challenge, uh, to you guys is so, from about noon today, we're asking you to, to fast. To fast until after the sunrise service tomorrow. Uh, and, and, and you fast from whatever God has put on your heart. Uh, I, I told you my opinion on it. The only thing I think works is food because it says you're staying away from something that's good for you. I would argue if Facebook or Copenhagen or beer is good for you all the time. Uh, but for me, it's going to be food. And, and whatever it is, at those times that you desire that or you feel hunger pains or whatever it is that you fast from, use that time to pray. Use that time to pray for, for His will to be done, whether it's uh, this coronavirus to run rampant or, or, or that it's not for just when He gets that number of people to repent that he, he kills it and squashes it and removes it. Pray. Pray for the church. Church with the big C. Pray for this country. And, and, and Man, it, it's not that bad. Just starting today at noon. So as soon as this is over, go stuff your face, go get you a big hog leg dip, whatever it is you got to do. <laughs> but 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 I'm challenging you. I'm asking you. Return, return to him. Fast from noon today till tomorrow at the close of the sunrise service. God bless you. We love you. Let's pray for you. Father, I pray that you just uh, you be with us as a church family, you be with us as a country, and I pray that as a as a body of believers there'll be a, a a call to repentance, Father. And I pray that you start to move amongst us in a mighty way. I pray that all those people that pick up that challenge today and decide to to fast, maybe some of them, man, they've been fasting for years and it's old hat to them, or maybe some of them, it'll be the first time they've ever fasted. I pray whether it's the tenth or the first that it's just as intimate as, as, as you say it is in your word. And uh, I pray that those times when they feel hunger pains or whatever it is that they're uh, staying away from today, Lord, that uh, you just remind them to keep your name on their lips. That they pray, that they pray with an intensity like they've never prayed before, Father. And I pray this not just for all those hearing this, but for me and my family as well, Lord that you strengthen us. Uh, Lord, I just pray that your will be done in our country. Uh, and that's, that's hard for me to say because I feel like I'm giving you an out sometimes when I say that. But, but Lord, with all my heart, I pray for your will to be done. And, and whatever that is, Lord, you just let me 
be an instrument of, of your will, Father. We love you. I pray that you strengthen my church family. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you Don't, guys for tuning in. We'll be on in the morning. 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock in the morning, so set your alarms now. Get up, get dressed, get your walking stick, but most importantly, bring your sword to the Bible. That's right. See you all in the morning. I'm hungry. <laughs>